how to deal with wandering affections as a woman. That's what we're talking about. Uh, and there are certain things that we do as women, all of us, including myself. Today, we're going to find out if that's healthy or not right here on our relationship uh, finding. And Amos Kevin Annan is a life coach who's joined us. But before that, let's talk about our special <laughs> assignments, <laughs> our special projects that was launched together with the first lady yesterday. Uh, save a child, save a mother. And may I say uh, that uh, Amos Kevin Annan and his family, his wife and beautiful daughters, uh, they've given us a donation. Here it is. Thank you. Like you should give me. Okay, you know, so okay. Let me this. present okay. it. On behalf of Evelyn, Jesua, and Efriye, mm. I present this to... Charlie, Steve, are you not taking a picture? Save you a know? child, save a mother. Yeah, we should take a picture and I will give it I to, want to invite, the first lady. I want to yeah. invite all my friends, yeah. pastors, church leaders, religious bodies to also contribute something so that we save a child as we save mothers. Thank you so Kudos. much. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the First Lady and the Multimedia Group, we receive this donation. Should I mention the amount? You can. Of 500 Ghana CDs from That's you. That's our widow's might. Amos, Kevin, Annan, and your family. May God give you plenty more of what you've given. Thank you. Thank you so much. We okay. could do so much for our nation. Yeah. All right, so uh, we will give you the numbers in a bit. We've got the, we've got a, a, a mobile money account as well. That's easier for like everybody else. So instead of just mentioning the numbers, we're just going to put it on the screen so that we can all contribute. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk about wandering affections as a woman. Uh, and, and this concerns uh, <laughs> any woman at all uh, who has difficulty sticking to one man and I'm laughing about it but this can be really serious sometimes it starts like you're flirting like oh mm. not a big deal Anna oh yes usually will start as an innocent activity mm. and the moment the state of innocence fades out maturity sets in wow. we become familiar with each other we begin to draw strength from each other we enjoy each other's company. We find solace. And then we become confidants. Mm. Okay. At that level of being a confidant, there is no longer the requirement of protocols. At the state of innocence, there tend to be a lot of protocols, restrictions. Boundaries are set. But when the person becomes a confidant, that's tough because you become overly familiar with them to the extent that you grant them certain privilege and sometimes rights. But what's, what's wrong with this? Is it because you probably would have a partner sitting somewhere? What normally happens is this, that wandering affections dislocates you from your primary commitment. Say you are in a serious relationship inching towards marriage or you are married and you have this invitation to do something that should be exclusive to whoever you're married to. Hmm. It starts innocently, and it draws you in. Many men, for instance, will not see the threat until it is overwhelming. For women, the way you are designed, you can see danger from afar. One mile away, you can predict it uh, by your intuition. You can easily see it. For many men, we have to train ourselves to be able to predict the danger. Yeah. Otherwise, but I, I can understand why women will not restrain themselves even though they see the I mean, danger. Because this can be fun. Yes, for them. Uh, for those women, so there, there are two categories. There are women who have become victims of other persons' wandering affections. And then there are women who Denise, uh, Denise uh, Charles calls the vultures. These are the ones who prey upon you get your attention, and for them it's a thrilling encounter. Hmm. They give you the chills and the thrills, and for them it's a power game. It shows how powerful they are. Some can even dare you. They would dare you. I mean, 
uh, a friend of mine shared a story of uh, two students having a conversation and one person said that this man of God, I'm going to make him fall. And this was a lecturer. I mean, when he stood in front of them giving lectures, she was not paying attention to the content, but he was looking at the container in front of her. <laughs> And, and, was and how she can make the container fall. Exactly. <laughs> and then she boldly makes this declaration that I'm going to make this man fall. And this is a man who is a pastor and a lecturer. Wow, that's like a game. You see? And her friend retorted and said, don't you know he's a man of God? He said, oh, I know how to get him. Wow. And those women who fall into the bracket of vultures, they know how to get you. But they, do they get you to keep you? They don't get you to keep you because for them, it's, it's, it's a certain feeling of a good factor that comes to them. That feel-good factor comes to them and they are fait accompli. My project is accomplished and I'm okay. So that kind of, it's, it's a deviant construct actually. It's a deviant construct. Um, the, there's a version that they call the Casanova. I mean, they are mm. players. They just play on the keyboards of your emotions. They give you, some do so to get money. Others do so because they have low self-esteem. Others um, do so because they are hurt. They've been through cyclical uh, disappointments and they think the only way to gain that strength back is to visit mayhem on men, and regardless of who you are. And usually they prefer the married men because they consider, the, <coughs> sorry, they consider them experienced. Mm. Is it also possible that a woman may want to do it just to test uh, the fact that oh she's still in the game or you know she's well, still pretty like you want some kind of reassurance and yes. so you want to test the waters and see how hot you can be yeah. to some of these men you can you can also find some women who are in this situation just trying to test the waters they they want to show their prowess they are viable I'm also available I'm mm -hmm. strong I'm not off the track I'm still within the lane. The journey is still not yet over. Yeah. So for those categories of women, I mean, they, they, they're daring, they're scheming, they maneuver. I mean, anything they do is choreographed. They do nothing outside the script. So when you're dealing with these people, you've got to be extremely careful because they dare you, and if you challenge them, they will shock you to your bones. What's, what's the danger? I mean, if, if you are with a woman like that in any of the categories that you've described. I mean, a woman of that nature clearly would perpetually be disloyal. So there's going to be a recurring theme of the violation of trust, which is at the heart of any human endeavor. Trust. Mm. Yeah. Um, Steve Covey wrote a book, beautiful book, The Speed of Trust. And he shows you how trust accelerates productivity. Now, when you transpose that into relationship, relationships where there's a high degree of trust, there's speed in the relationship. There's an element of predictability. Mm. I can rise to the defense of whoever is the significant individual in my life. But where there's mistrust, <coughs> there's an unclear path there's a certain cloud of uncertainty about whoever you are in a relationship with. If anything is said of them, you can only say, well, he's capable, she's capable. But where there is trust, you would, you would defend them with your all, if even it requires your life. And so the first thing that these types of women would suffer is an acute condition of disloyalty. And the second one is the violation, consistent violation of trust. The third one that happens to them is that sometimes it's either they think they have this ego, feel good, this low self-confidence. That's also another bundle that comes. And so as a result of their feeling low of themselves, they use this to compensate mm. for their feeling low. And for those to whom it's a game, where they plan and scheme on a dashboard, those ones, it's a sense of fulfillment. 
but it's a false sense of fulfillment. It's like a guy who's going to speak to the in-laws and says that I am without courage to face them. So he goes to take some alcoholic beverage to just make him look uh, tipsy. And then he goes and in the local language, my cocky can be natural. <laughs> I mean, my come out natural. I mean, to wait, I have spoken my mind. I've said what I wish to say, but he was under the influence of alcohol. So it's not like one who faces this pair in confidence. So the, the English call it temerity, Dutch courage, you know. So it, it comes across as fulfillment, but in real sense, it's empty calories. Hmm. It's empty calories. So those individuals also need to be held to now find an alternative to this sense of fulfillment that they claim they have. Hmm. For those who are mischievous and it's more of a, a test the waters I want kind of to, I, scenario. I, I'll bring him down. Give I'll me, bring him down. Yeah, give I'll, me, I'll, I'll, I'll show I'll him empty that. the container. <laughs> Just give me two days. <laughs> give me two days. And, <laughs> and, and, and for those, it's a boost. Yeah. Because that's a power game. Unfortunately, there is a faulty narrative now that makes them feel that I am a powerful woman. So it is synonymous to empowerment. Mm. But I consider this disempowerment. Because you see, you may be getting your way, getting all the things you think you're getting, uh, but it's a false sense of power. It's not real power. It's like a guy who takes his gun, and I call those guys suffering from Pampana syndrome. I think when we turn our attention to the men later, we would, we would go into details on this Pampana syndrome. And it is so sad to see people go into this self-destructive mode. Because it's self-destructive. It's empty calories. And because it's empty calories, you have no benefit at the end of it. Except that you don't see the end. You don't see the end from, from the, the beginning. Now. I mean, we are humans and therefore cannot see the end from the beginning. Only God, the creator, sees the end from the beginning. And therefore, we rely on God's guidance <laughs> and his mercy to help us to journey smoothly to the end. So you may have started off in this manner, but you could always get break free from them. How do you, I mean, for, because I'm, I'm looking at... Uh, and this is the scenario. This yeah. is actually is a typical case <laughs> what of we have in our wall is is this, and that's not a daughter. Mm -hmm. That's somebody, <laughs> that's and somebody her man, who, yeah, her man, thinking she's got all the attention. Yeah, but right behind her. So the lady in your company <laughs> is not the one you are craving for. Yeah, he's craving for something, but he is in the company of another. Is it possible that who he is with, very close to him, he loves her? Well, you would, it's possible to love two people, but you should not express the love at the same level. How? Let me show you. I'm married to my wife, but I love you, Mama V. Thank you. Why do I love you? I love you for the things you stand for, the agenda you're pushing, the commitment you show. But I cannot love you the same way I love my wife. There are some things exclusive to my wife. But there are some things I can generously share with other, other women. Other people who twist the two. Unfortunately, we are finding a situation where people are in a state of dilemma. Because they are actually appropriating the same levels of love. So he will say or she will say, I'm in love with two women and I'm doing the same things with them and I'm confused. You would always find yourself confused. Mm. Because you are not made and designed to reflect it that way. For instance, a father loves the daughters. But can you love your daughters the same way you love your wife? It's not possible. I love my mother. I can't love my mother the way I love my wife. There will be some difference. And which difference must be properly measured so that you don't get yourself into a state of dilemma mm. or at a crossroad. And oftentimes, you would find these situations being good friends. Mm. Good friends. Say yeah. the lady's good friend is also catching the eye of the guy. I've had countless of those stories told me. Somebody who comes to keep the house when you are out on a journey. 
I was in one school, a young lady asked me, is, it, is marriage necessary today? 16-year-old girl asked me this question. Is marriage necessary today? Ne necessary today. That's a serious question. It's a serious question. And given my background, I looked at her and I thought, okay, I will answer generally because it was a um, junior high school setting. So this was a class? It was a, a whole school. Oh, I was okay. to do something on uh, adolescent sexuality and the challenges that comes with it and how to manage it. So she asked this question. But I took particular interest in her. So after the session, I accosted her and we had a chat. Then she told me the reason behind her question. She first found her father in bed with her mother's closest friend. Oh, gosh. That was the first incident. And, and the way it happened, it was horrible. She left her proprietor's book at home and she was asked to go and bring it back. So she went to the proprietor's week driver. But the father who left home far much earlier than all of them was back. His car was still in the yard. So she goes to her room, picks the book, and climbs upstairs to go and say bye-bye to daddy, only to find these two adults mating. She screams the dad's name, shut the door, comes down, joins the vehicle, back okay. to school, disrupt. Two weeks after this incident, this young lady, 16 years, caught the mother kissing one of her father's best friends. Oh, gosh. It wasn't like a peg or a goodbye gesture, but a kiss. The light had gone out, so the man was leaving, and in the yard, they were in an embrace kissing. And this young lady stood in the balcony and saw them. Unfortunately for them, the light came back. Now, when I sat with this 16-year-old girl, I had to struggle to retain my tears. Did any of them address what she, she had has seen? Not, she has not raised the issue with both parents, but she's struggling with it and asking herself questions. Hence her question, is marriage necessary today? So these parents have sown a seed unknowingly to them in their daughter's heart. And for her lifetime, she was going to wrestle with this issue yeah. until she came because into contact with Because what's the point? Me. What's the point? Yeah. Because both of you are married. And the sad thing is that all four persons in the scenario are all married people. You said to it, it's singles who are in the office. A married man engages them in a conversation so intimate, so intense mm -hmm. about how their wives are not meeting their needs. Sexually, emotionally, psychologically, respect-wise, whatever. And then this young lady, out of sympathy, what is known as a sympathy bath, responds to this person, and she becomes a victim. How does she And she's caught in a web where she now wants to sympathize with this man well, oh wait, hang by on. being there. How do you call yourself a victim when you, when you knew very well from the beginning that see, this, guy, this guy is married? You see, the thing is this, that he's engaging in a conversation. You see, women are conversational in nature. Okay? Mm -hmm. you are, the summary is the ears and skin. So many of the men who are very mischievous and know how to play the cards well tend to be great conversationists. Mm tend to be very touchy-touchy with you. Yeah. When a man gets into your skin, as it were, through these media, many women will be vulnerable, including those who are serious and principled. It's true. Where, for instance, she's in a union where she's being starved of conversation. Somebody engages you in a conversation. And all of a sudden, sometimes you wake up in the morning, you're looking forward to a WhatsApp from them. Yeah. You're looking forward to reading from them. You want to hear them. You're happy to Before go back you to the sign office off, because you see them. You're excited. You meet them. You want to sign off and it's like, I want to hear you before. And so if for two days you haven't heard from this person, you, you can notice a redrawal effect on you. It impacts you. And women being the kind who are emotionally high in terms of their response rate compared to men, need to be extremely careful who gets into your emotional space and creates that warmth, mm. that friendship, what the French call camaraderie, 
it gives you a sense of safety. And that's where a woman is most vulnerable because the moment you sense that you are safe mm. in the arms of this individual, yeah. whose arms you have no business being there, you're vulnerable. You can pray all the prayer you know, you can bind as much as you care, you can lose, you can do whatever, uproot as the terminologies go today, <laughs> and it won't work because the person you're dealing with has something you're craving for. Mm. And for as long as the person fits into your template of the ideal, you would be vulnerable. How about that woman who says, I know what I'm doing is, is not right. I've tried to stop, but it's not working. You see, sometimes we want to have our cake, eat it, and still have it. And it's an illusion. Why? Because whatever you do, that perpetuates a particular cycle. The moment you stop doing is one step away from you pulling yourself from it. Unfortunately, we still follow the people, for instance, following their social media handles, checking their status, trying to check up on them, want to hear from them, and you say you're pulling away. It's what do you do? You cut them out completely? You've got to gradually wean yourself off. It's like a mother who's been doing exclusive breastfeeding for six months or one year. And <laughs> prior to the one year, you, you wean your child off gradually of the breast milk. Why do you do that? Because you've got to do it gradually. You don't suddenly mm. pull those benefits from them. Okay, so there's a need for individuals to begin to pull away gradually. And it should be done intentionally. Because if you don't do it intentionally, it isn't going to happen. Hmm. Because it's not going to drop from the sky. Pardon me, but it's, it's elusive to think that it will just happen by itself. Because the relationship moves from the innocent into the state where you become familiar and then you grow in what you're doing. Now you want to reverse it. The things that have made you so familiar with the individual are the very things that will cage you and keep you there. So you've got to begin to deny yourself those things. Otherwise, it's too idealistic mm. to want to wish that it will happen. It's not going to happen. What if you're doing it only because you want to get over what you're, either your husband or the person you are with, I mean, you, and you don't want to be like a nagging wife. Mm -hmm. So you're getting, even though in your mind, it's not going to go any further. You're just enjoying it because it helps you overcome the challenges that you have. And you can't confront it because you'll be tagged as nagging and you'll be pushing him away. So let me just do this, enjoy it. For as long as home. it is to your benefit and not benefiting the other party, it's exploitative. It's exploitative. Because see, exploitative relationships are very pervasive in the land. Because for me, this is me and what I want. Okay. The other person is also equally enjoying it. Okay, like that. so they acquiesce what you're doing. So he's married, I am married. And he or she is acquiescing what you're, yeah. you're pushing. We both have situations both you... at home. We're not sleeping with each other, but we have deep conversations and we're deep enjoying conversations. it. Deep conversations. Yes. That adjective is very important. Deep conversations. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're having deep conversations, which you should be having with your spouse, mm -hmm. clearly something is amiss here. Because those conversations, the recipient of this conversation is inappropriate. That's the, the reason. The one to receive it is your spouse. Can the reason justify you what you're doing? You can justify it. You see, for as long as you are in a state where you are wandering off what is rightly someone's own, mm. this person you consider significant, you consider a spouse, Everybody dreads the possibility of sharing one person with another. Everybody, male, female. It is only those who have designed and trained their mind and their emotions through what we call learned behavioral patterns.
to accept things, for instance, like spousal swapping. I was in, I was in, in the Sadek region. Spousal swapping. I was in the Sadek <laughs> region, one of the countries that I won't mention the particular one, and they had this thing they call Brai. And I was shocked to my bones. I was a guest of... <laughs> they <laughs> actually do real exchange. I mean, real exchange. People packed their, <laughs> the boots, came to the event with the intention to swap. And you could see people moving. And I was like... I know they swap children. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's spousal swapping. Oh, wow. People are swapping spouses for a weekend, for a week, for a month. And they lose it big time. Because, see, we are not meant to be that way. We are not designed to function that way. Wow. And then it becomes something that they do for fun. Then it becomes a new norm. Because, see, when abnormal becomes normal, normal is boring. Yeah. And so the abnormal gives you a thrill, gives you a chill, gives you this hype. You're excited. You have all your adrenaline flowing through your system. So we've got to be careful what we are turning into a new norm. Yeah. How do you win yourself the scenario that I, that I painted? How do you win yourself out of that? You see, for instance, you know what draws you to this person, and you know what isolates you from your significant person or your spouse. Mm. If it is the way he's harshly treating you, the way he's not complimenting you, the way he's not giving you attention, which is a big issue for women, the way he does not talk to you to feel affirmed. If these are lacking, you need to first bring it to your spouse's attention because that's what gives you the vulnerability. Mm. For as long as you're not addressing it, you would outsource that. What if, mm -hmm. what if, you know, you don't find him attractive any longer. He doesn't, he doesn't bring you up. He doesn't, I mean, it's, you don't feel anything. Mm. But the moment you start stop talking to this other person, you know, even if it's via phone, you kind of feel alive. You see, you're training your feelings. You're training your brain. Yeah? Your brain is adjusting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so certain words then create a certain connotative effect on you. Okay. So words then generate what they call words have meanings, and meanings are in the people. Ordinarily, your spouse will say, I miss you, and won't tickle you. Yeah. But the person says, I miss you, and all of mm -hmm. a sudden, you have goosebumps all over. It tells you that your brain gradually is adjusting. And, and you're, you're training, you're training, you're training, you're training, training the brain? You're training the brain because then it, it becomes deliberate at a point. So when you get home, now what you're going to do is that try as your significant person or spouse would do, you become numb mm. because you chose to be numb. It's happening, especially when you talk about issues of bedroom. There are spouses who enter with a mind that if even he touch me, he touches me or she touches me, I won't respond. Why would they do that? Because they have to tune because it is said that every action, the grandparent of every action is the thought, the idea, the mindset. That's why mindsets are huge. Because if I get into a relationship with a mindset that says, I'm here but I'm not committed to you only, mm. it's dangerous because from day one I fought it. Amazing. You will get invitations, others very explicit, others not too explicit by implied. But you have a duty to yourself to set limitations, the extent to which you can go, what is mm. called boundaries. Mm. So we all need emotional boundaries, we need psychological boundaries, we need physical boundaries, we need verbal boundaries. Because the things you say, you've got to be measured in what you say and to whom you say it. Mm. Because words are not just words. They elicit a response. And so the, this person needs to win themselves by first and foremost giving attention to the problem she's running away from. Whatever it is, she needs to do something about it. The second thing is that she must make a commitment by telling herself, I'm not going to delegate the responsibility for my emotions to another person. Mm. Sometimes we abdicate our responsibility to be in charge of ourselves. And so you hear things like, she made me do it. He made me do it. And the worst is, the devil made me do it. I mean, the last time I checked, the devil can never make anybody do anything they are not interested in doing. 
The devil only makes it attractive, and you have a response. He throws a party and invites you with a card, and you say, oh, I'll be your guest. And so there's a need for us all to take responsibility for what we are feeling at any given time. Mm. Now, my marriage counselor, Mrs. Suzlamte, and Reverend Suzlamte, if you're watching, thank you. She made a profound statement to me during our counseling. In the last week, we discussed sex and marriage. And she made a profound statement to me. Amos, the day another woman makes you have erection, that's the day you lost your marriage to that woman. Yeah. And any man who is listening can relate with that. Any lady that makes you have erection, you are vulnerable around her. She's innocent. She may not even know mm -hmm. what you're feeling. But you are struggling to contain yourself. How do you deal with that? I mean, how do you let go of that? <laughs> You've got to not keep it from being personal. Your biggest bet is not to go beyond your professional ethics, your chores, the work, the shadows. Just keep it there. The moment you traverse that space to get in personal with that person, that's, that's it. it. That's it. It may be the need to extend some courtesies and some politeness towards the person, but keep it within a certain context. And if they let you know that this is what they're feeling, ah, that's what dangerous. Do you do? Because what if the person is also interested in you? So what you are doing is that you are inflaming and inciting a passion in that individual, and once they respond. One guy said, Who did you have come here for? To wait, if you brought me thus far, I'm willing to die. Kill Just me. Finish me. Finish me. <laughs> <laughs> because there's no stopping. Because, see, the thing with males is this when a man has erection, he doesn't hear stop. But what, what does that mean to, to his marriage? What does that mean to the other, to, in fact, not the other, but the woman in his life? I mean, it's a violation of trust. It's a violation of trust, and therefore, you are uncommitted. And, and, and like I said, I mean, the lady in her company is not the one he's craving for. It can happen to women. You go to a restaurant, and I've seen those things. The lady looks at you. She twists her head and tries to run her hands through the hair. It may appear to you as an innocent gesture on first sight. But then the lady looks at you piercingly, mm. and you see her stroking her thighs, and sometimes you see they lower their lower cut already, just to show a certain flesh. Some will, you know, just move that way, do all kinds of things. Some would take yeah, a lipstick yeah, yeah. and deliberately try to invite you, and, and it is it is. Very, very incipient. Just you know, as, as, like, uh, just it draws. To you, I, I'm trying to picture for a woman what you also experience from other. Yes, from the other women people. also have that. And I, and I, and guys I, who and I realize, their chest, yeah, the, and hairy chest. Yeah, and, like, oh, and wow. there are people. And then th what I hate visit. is the one eye thing they give. <laughs> it's so annoying. <laughs> they give the eye, eh? <laughs> yeah, you, you know. know? And, and, and some of them. You, and I've sat in restaurants, you see a young lady, sometimes an elderly woman, who's sitting there, you can see she's looking for company. Those who are bored will just come and sit next to you. Hi, are you alone? Can I sit with you? And <laughs> you have been invited to a conversation you are not interested in. So what do you do? You have to truncate it as quickly as possible because those individuals know exactly their game plan. But because you don't know their game plan, you are susceptible mm. to them. I mean, it's not everybody who shows those tendencies who really means evil, yeah. but you must perpetually be on guard. And one of the, my statements is this. In God, I trust. Every human being, including myself, I monitor. <laughs> no, it's important. Clarify your doubts. Is it, is it possible that somebody <laughs> like that uh, in, in, in a restaurant would also innocently um, come and sit by you? Perhaps 
innocently because, as possible. Yeah. That's why but, I said they may be innocent. But, but you can the take conversation it on. may end with yeah, the trajectory uh, of the conversation will determine so can the I end. Have your number? Can I have your let's number? Let's do this you, again you, sometime. You exchange, Even though uh -huh. we didn't plan let's this. Let's do it again. Can we plan something? That's an inv invitation <laughs> to a landmine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you look at the, sorry, <laughs> when you look at the landmines in Vietnam, you can understand what it is you're going to have. Soon you're going to have your legs taken off. So there's a need for us all. I mean, you don't second guess people. Mm. You don't have a join this mindset when you're engaging with people. But you should have a personal responsibility to say, I am in charge of my emotions as a woman. The moment you notice, and for the ladies, they need to pay attention to this, number one. You notice you are receiving attention from somebody you don't need attention from. And there's a possibility you are being starved of attention in your significant relationship or your marriage. You've got to watch that attention. Mm. Secondly, the moment you notice you are getting attracted to somebody as a lady, and which attraction is not innocent. You're struggling to compose yourself right around that individual. You must watch that. Thirdly, a person who gets into your life and they are so affectionate with you, they, from time to time, will say, I miss you. They're good givers. Uh, good givers. You call them and say, oh, I was just thinking about you, and you called. These things, not all of them are innocent. Gradually, for a woman, you begin to feel that, oh, I'm, I'm important to this person. I mean a lot to him. The fourth one, when you're receiving affirmation or praise or validation from someone, it is very easy for you to begin to get attached to this fellow. Which attachments will now make it difficult for you to take them out of your mind? Yeah. And when you are struggling to take somebody out of your mind who has no business being on your mind, you must pay attention to same because pretty soon what is going to happen is this. In your heart, you'll be craving for them. Mm. You'll be clamoring for their company. You'll be wishing to be around them. You'll be wishing to hear from them. You'll be wishing to see them. You be wishing to read from them. This and is real, you know. This, I mean, that's that's the gradual slip, and it's what I call a slippery slope. It's like being on a polished surface, filled with soapy water, and you be giving skating shoes when you have lost balance, and you've been asked to ride on without a crash helmet. You are in deep trouble. So you start having what they call heart affair. It's affair in your heart. Mm. And it can happen. I, I, I read a book, I mean, since many... It happens. It happens. I read a book of a lady who was a married woman and was having an affair with five men. <gasps> now, this woman, you see, when a woman, it was through her. I read a lot of writings by women about women than I do about men because I'm a man. <laughs> And 75% of the people I sit in counseling are females, mm. post-tertiary females. So I can see a lot of deep insights. She says that when a woman is having an affair in the heart, it's even more difficult than that of the affair in the mind. Because mm. many men, yes, it's in the mind and then in the body. But for women at the heart level, because it's deep, women take a long time to put you in the chambers of their heart. And when they put you in the chambers of their heart, taking you out is an uphill task. Mm. And sometimes it's, a, it's still a flint with uh, an ex who predated your current relationship or marriage. <laughs> and so people are having once-off contacts. And that one-off contact is more than one-year contact with your spouse. When you're in such it's a state, more satisfying. Oh, more satisfying, more fulfilling, more engaging. It, it, it's, it's, it, it gives you that charged. Yeah. And so there's a need for us to also pay attention to this because see, the danger is that when the people whom you see giving you all these things, 
don't carry it through to the end. You will feel terrible about yourself. Let's invite people to join us uh, in this conversation. Mm. You can give us a call now, 0302 0302-211-6902. And this is our conversation. Uh, ladies, the men are welcome to join as well. Uh, but everything you've talked about, everything we've talked about, I know that every woman experiences one or the other. Mm. This lives with us. We go through it. And, and I, I think that we talk about red flags, red flags in relationships, and it's usually, oh, before you <laughs> enter into marriage. Yeah. But I think even within the marriage yeah. itself, yeah. you can also look at some of these red flags. Yeah. And these are red flags yeah. for me. They because are. sometimes people are really nice. Oh, yeah. You extremely. know, people will say, oh, I was, I was just going to buy lunch, and I thought, get I'll it. buy, I'll get you lunch. And gradually, like, they're becoming really nice. Mm -hmm. And you're also beginning to like them mm. because it looks like they know you. you so know? what you need to do is to separate I like you from I love you. And I love you from I'm longing for you. Mm. Let's speak to Timothy. Uh, Timothy Abeire is in Wale Wale. And he joins us. Good morning to you, Timo. Hello. Hi. Timothy, good morning. Good morning, Damaji. Yes, Timo. Thank you for joining um, us. Thank you. Let's hear um, you. I only want to contribute to your nice program earlier this morning. Please do. And by the way, good morning to Mr. Anna. Yes, good morning, Tim. Mm. Um, please, uh, let's say you've left your ex, and this ex of yours is now married, and she keeps on calling you that probably he wants to take for you what are you doing and that kind of thing. So um, considering those sort of attitudes from her, can it definitely lead to something you are not expecting probably coming back to her as your lover? Okay, we'll give it attention. Mm. All right, thank you, Timothy. Nelson Najamai is in family and we'll speak to him now. Good morning, yeah. Nelson. Yeah, hello. Hi, how are you? By the grace of God. Fantastic. Let's hear you. Mama Z, I miss you so much. Oh, I miss <laughs> I missed you too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to contribute to the program. Please do. Yes. Um <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. As a okay, Nelson, are you okay? <laughs> yes, I'm listening. All I'm, right. I'm, I'm talking, yeah. Okay, sure. Yes. I'm saying that mm -hmm. in life, um, yeah, yes, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the program. Okay, okay, so. Nelson, this is what we're going to do. You have to turn down the volume on, on your television sets. Oh, okay. Aha, uh -huh. and let's speak through the phone. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I've done that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about marriage, there are certain stages of marriage. We have uh, about five stages of marriage. We have about uh, we have the infantile stage, we have the baby stage, we have the adolescent, we have the ma maturity, mm -hmm. and and so these type of stages, these stages, there is one we call ado adolescent stage. This is a stage where People do try and error uh, things. They try, they always try. As they do that, they are looking for the right person. But when it comes to the maturity stage, that is where the person is matured, the person has settled down, matured in mind, um, um, financially sound and everything. But some people get married whilst they are still in the adolescent stage. And so when it happens that way, when they get married, they still do the try and error uh, uh, issues. And so for me, my advice is that everything that is in the world has value, including yourself. And so when we have personal value, self-value, whatever you have, Whatever you have, the, that, the kind of value that you have 
will actually translate into whatever that you have. What I mean is that if your value, if you value yourself, mm -hmm. whatever you have, you value it. Okay. And so your thoughts will determine the kind of behavior and your whatever um, that you actually. I get you. Your thought will uh, actually determine uh, whatever you do. Okay. So when you change your thoughts, your world will change. Okay. And so All your right. vulnerability, when you are vulnerable to um, 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 a, a close friend or whatever, it, it has to do with your mind. Okay. When your mind thinks is that I have someone in my life, mm. what again do I need somewhere? Okay. I, I, because I, I we, place we value you. in the person. Mm. I get you. And we get okay. your point, Nelson. A very All important right. contribution you've made there. We appreciate it. Let's talk to Gilbert. I'm not sure your name. Gilbert, good morning. Let's hear you. Good morning, Mama V. Yes, Gilbert. Morning. Mama v, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Gilbert. Thank you for sticking there with Roland whilst I was away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and my guest, Mr. Anand. Yes, thank you, but Gilbert. I love this man very well. And thank I you, like sir. what he has done this morning. I mean, donating to the sick, a child, and then the mother. But may God bless you for that. Amen. We're waiting for yours, Gilbert. <laughs> oh, never mind. It will come. <laughs> thank you. It will come to you and All right. Thank you. The numbers but will be I'll out. Be, in fact, I'm very happy for this program that you are holding this morning. Um, before I proceed, let me say good morning to my dear wife, Mrs. Nancy. I'm not this. But I love her so much. <laughs> but um, with regard to what you are saying, you know, Mr. Anna says something that is self control. Your mindset to every situation might be controlled. If you don't have self control over your, I mean, your, your entire system, you are going to do this, no matter who you are. So, with everything, even if you are give, uh, being given an attention from someone who is outside your marriage, I think. If you have self-control over your body, you are going to be no matter Yeah. I like that a lot. Thank you very much, Gilbert. Andrew is in Bulga. Andrew, good morning. Hello, Andrew. Good morning. Yes, sir. Thanks for joining us. Let's hear you. Yeah. My, my contrib contribution is in the form of a question. Please go ahead. Yeah. I wanted to find out like let's say you are in a relationship and it happens that one mistakenly cheat on the other and you end up getting married is it possible that it might continue or it is it, 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 are you, it, it can are you end. marrying the person you cheated it, the person is married the already okay and then you go out to cheat would it continue yeah, yeah. Okay. What, okay, but what, what is informing the thinking? Hello, Andrew? Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, my I'm my with question you. is, why are you suspecting that it could happen? Why are you afraid that it may, not it may happen? Not afraid, not afraid, but just a little education. I just want... Okay. Okay. You know, a little education. All right, I, I hear right. you. Andrew, thank you. We'll come to that. Let's speak to Alex. Alex is in Tamale. Good morning, Alex. Good morning. Yes, Alex. Let's hear you. Yes, uh, I'm so um, enjoying the conversation, particularly the, the gentleman, the Mr. Anand. I want to ask her uh, whether in the where families like polygamous family, somebody is married to three, four wives, how exactly are the women, how would they be feeling? Towards the man because one over three or over five. What is what kind of love is being shared among them? Is this that mm -hmm. we have decided to put some of them around for company and loved one or in house? That's the man that as a man. I want to understand this theory because it is something like I, I can say I can say this uh, with certainty. In my own family, my father married about ten. How was he able to handle the ten? Is it with Proper love or just wanting children. I want to know. Can I ask you a personal question based on what you've said? Yeah. Your mother was what number? My mother was number three. Okay. How do you think, as a son, 
or as a child, how did you think she exhibited that love that your father was giving her? As a child, I would not be able to actually understand. But now, hello, Alex. Yes. Yes. It, the difficulty is I will not be able mm -hmm. to determine because until now I'm I'm hearing what okay. uh, Mr. Anani is making the yeah. very critical issues about it. I think it's very important to my point is understand. you know did your mother give you any indication that she wasn't yeah uh, she wasn't getting love she wasn't fulfilled thank you you know that is an issue of uh, of course you wouldn't be able to know okay right? I we get were you all around uh, our mother is <laughs> I mean. The yeah. senior woman is, for, is in charge of all of it. So how will you know? Yeah, I get yeah. you, Alex. Yeah. It's a very difficult <laughs> question, but we'll see. Thank you very much, Alex. <laughs> I see where you're going with this. Okay, so I think it's a good time for, for, for you to begin to tackle hmm. the, the things that have come before so you. Let me start with Alex's own. Yeah. It is said that the African man is intractably polygamous. Now, I don't know how true that is, but it's become a statement that is in the minds of people who would use that as a basis to become polygamous. Mm. So they follow a tradition that those who do it for a religious reason, I am not competent to speak to the yeah. religious Sometimes issues. Sometimes it's a culture as well. Others, yes, those are the traditional ones. It's cultural and traditional. Then others also do it as a result of the figures that are thrown out. Yeah. That there's there are more six, women, man. six or eight <laughs> <laughs> women to one man. So it becomes mercy being extended. We need help. <laughs> <laughs> now, if somebody is marrying you out of mercy, I'm not too sure the extent of the commitment. I'm not too sure. Because they will still need heavy doses of mercy in order to stay with you as a spouse. And grace. As, exactly. So um, to that extent, that's what I will say. And then looking at Andrew whether cheating can become cyclical. Mm. Indeed, it can become cyclical. But there are people who are in monog monogamous affairs. They are with just one person, aside their spouse. And they mm. have this repeated. That's like a full relationship. Exactly. As well. Yes. So there are those who go for multiple individuals, but there are others who stay with one only. Side aside chick. Permanent side chick. Yeah. But you can always break the cycle. You can always break the cycle. You must show that you have a commitment and willingness to break the cycle. Now, I must say that if you cheat in a union, gaining back trust is not a miraculous event. It's a process. Mm. You have to now begin to reassure whoever you are in a relationship or marriage with. And then also put in practical steps that demonstrates that you are moving away from that. Over the weekend, I was at the couple's retreat. And there was a beautiful um, story shared of a man who cheated. And now, instead of going out alone, he went in the company of his daughter as a checkmate. Okay. If the wife was unavailable, he would rather go with his daughter so that he doesn't do anything. But my question is, for how long can you have these persons yeah. policing you? Because there is also affair in the mind. There's virtual affair. Because today we live at two planes, the visible plane and the virtual plane. And people may not visibly be engaging in any amorous relationship with others, but through the virtual world, they may be doing that. How do you manage that? Mm. Your, your spouse is not going to be there. So you yourself must now take responsibility and ownership of your own decisions, your own choices, and relational activities. The Tim was also asking uh, whether you can still hang around with your ex. Or if they're calling to check if up on you, what to are check you doing? On you. How are you? That kind of stuff. That gesture may look innocent, may actually be innocent may start off innocent. But what is the level of sustainability of that? You see, when a relationship becomes romantic or sexual, and you want to reverse it into a platonic relationship, it's a nightmare. Mm. Because there will be memory recalls, there will be flashbacks, there will be sometimes subtle commentaries that are run. That takes you back 
If you've pulled a tooth before, you'll notice that anytime your tongue rolled, it went into the cavity. So ES factors can be destructive. Mm. They can distract you. So you are better off keeping an arm, arm's length relationship with those individuals. If they are buried, let them not turn into a ghost. They will hunt you. They will hunt you. Yeah. I mean, I remember we, we, those days we were watching movies like Haunted House and stuff. <laughs> and we could not go and sleep. Dracula. <laughs> and you know, all these dead stories and you could not sleep. So if you don't want to have nightmares mm. in your relationship, please endeavor. You, your ex is not your enemy. But be careful you don't make them your friend mm. either. Okay. You can be friendly towards them, but don't make them your friend. Because friends influence friends. Friends listen to friends. Friends confide in friends. Friends hurt you to heal you. So be friendly towards them. Don't hate them. Don't destroy them. Unfortunately, people take to social media to destroy excess. Yeah. Splashing all kinds of images and stuff to them and uh, about them, and it's not good at all. Um, if you have ES factor, please endeavor to give it attention and deal with it. And uh, mm. I'm sure that um, we would have contributed to ensuring that we build strong relationships and stable marriages. Mm. Last time, people were asking for any resource they could read. And there's one I want to recommend for women in particular, since today the dedication is towards women. Okay. There's a book titled Every Woman's Battle. Every Woman's Battle. I would recommend it for women, older women. The same book. Is it older women? Yeah, old, el I mean, older women, I mean, Women who are older, they know themselves. <laughs> <laughs> that's every woman's battle. So can battle. I read it? You can read it. Okay. I mean, that's ev every woman's battle, All Shannon right. Etheridge. I would recommend this. It, it helps you to understand your sexual life and how you need to avoid being vulnerable. Then there is every young lady's battle. Okay. Every young woman's battle. That's also available. There is preparing your daughters for every woman's battle. This is the every single woman's battle. There's every young ladies also. Okay. Those, those are appropriate for those in their teens. Mm. This is for those in young adulthood stage and who are single. And that's the every young the woman's, woman's battle. battle. Okay. And then the final one is preparing your daughters for every woman's battle. Um, next week I'll give some recommendations for men as well. But if you're a man too, you can read it as long as you're not going to use the principles shared. You see, the, the threat with information is this. Information can be used for evil mm. and can be used to enrich. Yeah. And it's in the hands of the one who has the information. So if you read about how women are vulnerable, don't use that as a tool to manipulate women. You should rather use that to complement their efforts aimed at staying safe. Mm. Let's, let's keep our settings and relationships safe so that we have a more congenial atmosphere for people to thrive and then also live. Thank you. And if you read any of these books, you can let us know yeah. uh, what it has taught to you, what you've learned. Uh, yeah, and share that with us as well. Uh, what can I say? Thank you very much. Mr. Welcome Amos back. Kevin Anan, <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you for thanks what for you've done you. with Save a Child, uh, Save Great a Mother. Fun. I say that most of us perhaps would never step uh, uh, at cut. We would mm. never go to Comfort yeah. because of where we live. But you never know. You never know which of your relatives. We are interrelated. It may not even be your relative. But we the are actually fact interrelated. That you are helping another human yeah. being. Yeah. That means a lot. Because you never know. Those children coming out of the mother and baby mm. units, you never know where they could end up someday. Uh, we've got the accounts numbers. We're going to splash them on the screens now. Please take the details. So we've got, uh, this is the uh, Access Bank, bank accounts. We've got the dollar accounts, the euro accounts. Uh, and then the MTN mobile number, which is 0547 
0562-0547-966662. I tell you what, you can always walk into our offices. If you're in Kumasi, then you can go to Love FM and then make a donation as well. Uh, and then if you're in Accra, you can come to us here at Joy, uh, Joy FM. Yeah, in Kokumlimli. And then uh, make a donation. Okay, so we'll leave you with what we have in our video world It starts now. with teens. So don't train yourself to be huh? wandering with your affections. Because <laughs> it is this that we say the young shall grow. Uh, so you start this way and you grow with it. Yeah. And it becomes a new norm. I don't want this for myself. No, not for our children. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I tell you what. Make this weekend a, w a wonderful <laughs> one. Don't go wandering. Sometimes you never know. If you flat, keep it, you know, within. Local. Yeah.